I'm gonna cross my fingers and hope that this works because, well, it says it'll work. Let me just turn it on. Is that how that works? I guess that's it, you guys. <laughs> We're done. Gauges in 2024 are just outdated. They're pointless. There's no reason to have three or even five whatever gauges in your car. You can get gauges now that are just, like I said, multifunction. They do everything for you. It's all in one gauge. There's no reason to have an overabundance of gauges. Key point here is simplification is key. So for today's video, I have a very special surprise. It's not going in my Z, it's not going in the Supra or the CRX even. As a matter of fact, we are installing a new head unit into my BRZ. And I'm sure many of you have heard of this head unit by now, but it is the Atoto S8. Yes, it's a Chinese head unit, but it is extremely budget friendly. I've seen great reviews on it and it seems to work really well. What I'm gonna do with this is I'm actually going to get a Bluetooth interface, which will send data to the head unit to get real-time engine data displayed on my radio head unit. It's not quite like an IC7 or Haltech like full face dash, you know? I mean, granted, the screens are about the same size, but this will do pretty much everything that the ECU from the engine will send to the OBD link interface. Now, in this video, I'm gonna do more than just show you guys the install of this into the BRZ. Now, you could get this to work in just about any vehicle possible. If you can swap out the head unit with a seven inch display double din head unit, then you can get it to work. And it has to have an OBD2 port on it. With that said, let's go ahead and get this thing installed into the BRZ and get this all set up and you guys can follow along and do the same thing in your car. I would also like to add that I have freshly cleaned my entire toolbox. So this is a fresh slate we're working with here today. It has been a complete disaster ever since I pulled the motor out of my Z. I've had at least two or three engines pulled apart in that time. So let's get this thing open and see what we got. All right, right off the bat, obviously splicing cables. Uh, there is a little bit of wiring that will be required as expected. I wouldn't expect a universal double din to be plug and play. Looks like we got a coax cable, probably for a rear view camera. Oh no, this is a Wi-Fi antenna. We also have a GPS antenna, very cool. Also coax cable. So there's a lot of extra accessories that you can wire into this thing that um, I may not ever use for this car. I even have a microphone for probably the Bluetooth. Oh, I want it to work with my factory Bluetooth microphone though. I wonder if I can get this to work. We'll work on that. We'll see what we can come up with. Instructions, which uh, we'll probably need those. Ooh, even comes with some screen protectors. Look, I gotta give these guys credit for a Chinese head unit. This is pretty legit. It's actually a very small unit and it's just meant to fit the frame factor because of the screen. So that's it, you guys. This thing probably weighs all of like two pounds, maybe three. Looks like we got built-in fuse, all the analog video and audio cables, which is impressive. Oh no, these are all audio. Let's go ahead and get this in the car. Starting with pulling the old one out of my car. Nice. And of course, don't forget to head over to the website, support your boy. Thank you guys so much for those of you that have already purchased stuff, especially those of you overseas in Australia, even UK. Thank you so much. We got the 300ZX merchandise here. I got some more generic stuff here for those of you that maybe you don't have a 300ZX. Um, this is actually the back of my Built Not Bot shirt. And then we even got women's leggings and license plate frames. Yes, the leggings say Billy Built, but I also have them that say Fair Lady Z. So if you want to get your girl some 300ZX leggings, or maybe you are a girl and you just want some 300ZX leggings, you don't want them to say Billy Built on them, I get it. So head on over, check out the website. Appreciate every single one of you. Let's get back into today's video. For those of you that have been watching this channel, you know by now that I build my own motors, I paint my own cars, I tune my own cars. Now, I have something to confess. I have never installed an aftermarket head unit in any vehicle. I have never done this before. I'm a complete amateur at car audio. What's funny and ironic about this is I'm not actually installing the head unit for the car audio because if I'm being completely honest, I don't listen to the radio. So maybe there's something wrong with me. I, there's so many other things I'd rather listen to and I enjoy being alert and focusing on what the car is doing. Before we do this, I, uh, I have a problem here because I am not working out there. It looks like it might rain, it definitely wants to. Supra's gotta go outside, BRZ's gotta come inside. 
Supra, you might get wet today, but let's get these things moved around, get the BRZ inside, and we could start on this. All right, just to show you guys what I'm working with here. This is my uh, 2013 basic audio head unit. It is ancient at this point. It still works. And then I did update this piece here. So this piece here is definitely different from a standard uh, 2013 model Subaru. Should probably disconnect the battery first before we do any of this. Just got a little 10 millimeter. There we go. This all should just pop right off. Should, from what I remember. Easy enough. Obviously, if you guys have a magnetic socket, these things work wonders for stuff like this. Now, this whole piece should just slide right out. It is extremely hot. Holy crap. If you're doing this in the sun, have some heat protection because this thing is cooking right now. All right, there we go. So we are revisiting my head unit install. I actually started this about a week ago, took a week off, did the last video you saw, and now we're back to doing this. The problem I was having was A, uh, the Atoto unit only gave me a simple harness, which I didn't really, I didn't wanna go through the trouble of chopping up a factory harness on my Subaru because it's untouched. I know how messy and nasty um, head unit installations, radio installations can be. I didn't wanna mess with that. So I went ahead and ordered aftermarket um, adapter harness from autoharnesshouse.com. There's a part number right there. You can get it yourself. I'm gonna cross my fingers and hope that this works because, well, it says it'll work. So the reason I'm saying all that is, uh, well, I typically have a problem with this kind of stuff. I, I just have a bad history with adapter harnesses in general. I first ran into it when I did my OBD1 swap on my CRX. Uh, the harness they sent me was not correct, but yeah, hopefully we're just gonna plug this in and everything's gonna turn on fine and dandy and it'll be okay. We don't have to worry about anything. The next order of business we got is the dash installation kit. So the dash installation kit I've got is from a company called Metro. The problem I'm running into is that it doesn't really seem to uh, line up all that well. And I'll, I think part of it's probably because of this bracket right here. So no big deal on that because, well, I have a grinder and cutting tools and this is just plastic. So we'll just make the plastic disappear. First order of business is let's get this harness installed and see if it even works. From what I can tell, well, we have the factory OEM plugs. And from what I can see, there's only one primary plug for this head unit which is right there. Everything else seems to be pretty straightforward. Uh, this looks like it might be for my antenna. Let's just go ahead and plug that in there. Okay, so quick little tip. Um, plug the adapter harness into your factory harness before plugging it into the new head unit. And then... Uh and just turn it on. Is that how that works? I guess that's it, you guys. <laughs> We're done. Oh. Oh, you know what? I never plugged in the antenna. Hold on a second. There we go. Let's try this again. Okay, you guys, so um, that worked very simply. Uh, it was literally plug and play. My honest opinion, don't fight with trying to like switch wires and get the wires all mixed up with doing it yourself. Just buy the aftermarket adapter harness and plug it in. That literally took all of like two minutes. Well worth the money. So now that I got the head unit plugged in, I now wanna plug in and see if I can get this ECU tech Bluetooth dongle uh, communicating to my Android head unit. And from what I've seen, there is about one article written up on this. Um, I wanna see if I can follow that myself. I've never really done this myself. This is my primary reason for getting this head unit. If for any reason I can't do it over ECU tech, I do have what's called an OBD link Bluetooth module. Pretty much the same thing. It'll plug into your OBD2 port and it'll communicate to the head unit via Bluetooth. Um, you can get uh, all sorts of gauges, engine displays, readouts, all that stuff 
on the head unit itself. It's pretty freaking cool if you ask me. But obviously to do so, you have to be connected to your Wi-Fi to download the apps that are needed. Well, one more thing that I realized that, uh, well, I didn't quite do right is I need to install a couple other things. There are some accessories that come with the head unit. You got the Wi-Fi antenna, you got the GPS antenna, and then also a microphone. As you've seen, you don't have to install all of these if you don't want. But if you want one thing to work or another, you're gonna have to install these. I will say there are certain things that you can do that'll make your factory antennas and GPS work. Uh, it just requires some adapter kits for these pieces here. You can buy the adapter kits online, which is probably what I'll end up doing if I find them. I'll put the link down in the description of this video for you guys, and you can just order those and plug those in yourself. Let me see if I can fish this in through here. Bring this out like so. There we go. And just wrap the zip tie back around it, and we'll shove it back up in there. Uh, if anything, I'll tape it down somewhere, but for now, I think this will do just fine. My Wi-Fi is right there too. Let's go. Let me put in my Wi-Fi information. You guys can't see this. Now, after you get your head unit connected to your Wi-Fi and all that, go to the Play Store, search for ECU Connect, and we're just gonna hit install. We should then be able to uh, connect it to my Bluetooth dongle down there. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit skip for now. All right, it is now connected and we hit continue. So that works there. Well done, you're ready to finish to use the app my car and then with this i'll be able to actively see any kind of engine parameters that my ecu tech dongle will recognize okay so i got it to connect finally it's a little bit of a process but we got it all figured out now so now we can just go through in here click on dashboard okay so as it turns out every single one of these is going to be different for ecu tech dongle when you go create a new dashboard you have to literally there's a button in the top right you hit plus create a new dashboard you can select portrait or landscape mode and just hit create. And then if you want to add new uh, uh, parameters or anything like that, you just hit, ah, there we go. So now I have engine speed, vehicle speed. Um, let's go ahead and edit this. I obviously don't need it that big. I don't need this one this big. So we'll move this to about there. We'll move it to here. And then I can add more stuff in here. Okay guys, so I got it set up here in the car, finally. However, I made a few little adjustments and I added in the gauges that I like to see personally. I may end up removing engine speed because I can cl clearly see engine speed up here. Aside from all that, um, I thought it looked pretty good. The blue and black kind of matches the car scheme because, you know, obviously the car is blue and we got black interior. For these guys, if you look here, I actually cut it inwards more and down so that I can simply put it right on over the factory bracket because nothing beats the factory bracket. And then when I bolt it in, it should sit nice and flush with the rest of the head unit. When you're running these brackets, run the heavier, the, the bigger bolts because these will not go all the way through. And uh, I had a mild panic attack because I thought I'd have to wait yet another day to get the right bolts, but no need because the head unit came with the correct bolts. So. Okay guys, one more thing. Before I put this final panel on, if you looked in there, there's my GPS module right there. It is stuck to the bottom, as well as my Wi-Fi antenna, which is stuck right there to the side. Uh, this little pocket here makes a nice little hole and there's a little hole in the back of it where you can fish the wires through. So uh, now as for the speaker, what I'm gonna do is get an adapter harness. I don't have that on hand right now, but I'm going to order one. Um, I'll go ahead and put a link down in the description for that. But with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and put this final panel back on and uh, we'll finish this up here. It's now working perfectly. Look at those air fuels. You know who tuned this car? This guy, this guy right here. This is the final head unit install. Um, I got my gauges set up here. This is pretty much what I'm gonna use more or less. I now, like I said, I did order the OBD Link uh, Bluetooth module for to connect to this. However, 
As you can obviously see, I don't even need it. I can use my ECU tech program to just connect to my Android Auto radio as it is. My advice, if, you, if you're not gonna run a direct connection from your OBD2 port uh, to the head unit in your vehicle, uh, the biggest suggestion is to spend the money on a good OBD2 dongle. Not all of them are created equal. Some of them will broadcast data faster than others. And the best one that I've seen the reviews on out there that you can really get for your money is the OBD Link uh, LX model. Now there is an MX model, I believe is the name of it, but the MX model has certain features that are mostly used for like Ford and Chevy, which on a Subaru anyways, you'll never use those features. Because remember, at the end of the day, the OBD Link module is primarily used to scan codes and read engine data. I have ECU tech in my car, meaning my car is already reflashed and programmed. So I don't have any need for the OBD Link uh, Bluetooth dongles. Do what's right for you. Uh, this simply just made sense for me because, well, I already have it and I can save myself the 80, 90 bucks of not needing the OBD Link adapter. Let's go on a quick drive though. I really want to see how this functions. Again, I can put whatever I want in here. I can do bar graphs for everything. I can do date gauges for everything. I can even do uh, uh, bars for everything. Change the colors, the background, everything here. Like it, It's pretty well customizable. My 300ZX over here, honestly, I don't have a working radio in it. I'm not afraid of losing that. So that's probably in my near future because I'm sick and tired. I have three gauges in that car, three, just three. And I'm sick of them. I can't do it, it's too much. I don't know how anybody has more than like three gauges in a car. It's it's too much, the wiring is insane. It's so much easier to just get something that works off of CAN data or Bluetooth, like get it all in one. It's so much simpler. Unless you're going for that really heavy, retro modified, like 2000s era car, um, just just do this. It's so, so much simpler, so much easier. Anyways, let's go for a drive in this thing and see how well this works. say this looks pretty good with all the lighting and everything else um, like I said earlier you can change this to whatever you want now if anything I'm really interested in the lag time between the engine and the interface here because usually that's what ends up being the case so either way I don't think it's gonna be that bad because this is ECU tech and it is the proprietary dongle for ECU tech so with all that said let's go for a drive and let's get some information on this good engine data there it's nothing crazy it's nothing too over the top also since there has been zero knock correction I may be more inclined to uh, bump up some more ignition timing into it. All right, y'all, I guess that's gonna do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Uh, the BRZ now officially has some active gauges that I can read off of. And thank God it's not a giant cluster mess of multiple gauges that I have to deal with. We'll catch y'all next time. Take care.